So frequently when we're working with data in PowerShell, we're working with it live in that moment. But there are times that we're going to want to export data. And this could be we we may want to export data to uh, use it at a later time. So use it as a baseline. We may want to send it to somebody else to have them review it. There are lots of different ways we can, or lots of different reasons why we may want to export data. Now I'm going to switch to my C colon backslash scripts file uh, location here first. And then let's talk about different ways we can export. And we'll look at four different options here. And a couple of them aren't really exports, but you know, We'll show you what we're talking about here in a minute. So I'm going to start with the commandlet get service. And this is going to give me all of my services, whether they're stopped or running or not. This is going to get all of my services and display them on screen for me. Now, that's great. But if I want to save it out to a file so that I can use it later, I actually have a handful of options. So let's look at this one first. Let's do get service. I'm going to pipe that. And remember in another video we talked about piping things uh, from one commandlet to another. So I'm going to pipe that to out file. Now out file is going to save a file for me. And I'm going to save this as services.txt and hit enter. Now you'll notice instead of displaying it on the screen, it saved it to, well, hopefully services.txt. So we're going to do a get child item and there is our services.txt. Okay. Now, if I want to view that, I can use Notepad to open up services.txt. And there we go. And you'll notice this is kind of formatted the same way. Now, this is a straight text file. So all it gives me is the data that would have been on my screen. So this is just a straight text file. It's not structured in any way, shape, or form. Now, if I want to use the data later on, a better choice is going to be to export it in a structured data format, like CSV or XML or something like that. So for that, what we would do is we do get services. I want to pipe this to export-csv. Now, export CSV is going to convert it to a CSV file, a comma separated value or comma separated variable file, and then we'll uh, save it uh, in that format. So I'm going to save this as services.csv. Let me do get service instead of get services. There we go. Now, if I do a get child item, we're going to see a services.csv. So let me go ahead and open up my services.csv and I'll do the same thing. Notepad services.csv. And here you're going to see we have a lot more data. So <clears throat> up here at the top in a comment, we're going to have, hey, this is what type of object we are. And then we're going to have column headers. And then we're going to have all of our data in columns separated by commas. Now, this is harder for us to read, but it is more usable. And the reason it's more usable is because I can now import that. So I can import CSV services.csv and display all of that data for all of my services. Now, let me notice that for all the services it's showing me all of the data. If I want to display the content of the uh, text file, I can do a get content services.txt and that's in my old format, but that's all there is. Because I exported to a CSV file, my CSV is going to contain all the information about all of my services. So way more useful. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these items. Remove item asterisk. And yep, we got rid of everything. Okay, now I can import and export my services. Now I can do that with anything. Oh, let me show you a couple of other things real quick. So I'm going to do a couple of other things more with get services. I'm going to get services, and this time I'm going to do it to an out dash grid view. Now, OutGrid view requires that you have GUI capabilities, but it puts your output up here in a document that will allow you to filter and search and sort and do all the things that we're kind of used to doing in this type of um, in this type of data sheet view. So, OutGrid view it doesn't actually save it, 
so that we can use it later. And just do status and name. Uh, oh, that's adding criteria. I'm not paying any attention. So I can add criteria here. Let me do status. Show me just things that are running. And that should give me some additional criteria. Only showing me running services now. So it gives me that dynamic view that I'm used to having in any other Microsoft data sheet. All right. Now I can also do this as an HTML file. For that, I'm going to do a get service. And by the way, this works with any command where you're dealing with data. So all of our out file, out grid view, um, convert to HTML, all of these things work with any type of data that's left in our pipeline when we're done. So I'm going to get service and I'm going to pipe it to convert to HTML. Now, the convert to HTML does not give me uh, a file. It does not save it as a file. It just converts it. In fact, if I just run it at this point, it's going to show me, well, that, which is my HTML code, but it doesn't save it as a file. So I can pipe that to out file. And remember, out file saves it as a file without any additional formatting. So we're not going to have any additional formatting here, but we don't need it because we got that when we did the convert to HTML. So I'm going to do out so put to services.html. Now, to open up services.html, I can type, this isn't going to work, but I want to show you something. I can type services, let me get the right file name here, services.html, and it says it doesn't recognize it. However, you know, there is a file in that current location. Now, the reason I want to show you this is because we do the same thing with scripts when we go run them, and we're not dealing with scripts yet but it's going to work the same way. We need to specify the current location, period backslash services.html. If I was running a PowerShell script, it would be period backslash the PowerShell script name. And I hit enter, and that'll go ahead and open it. And now you'll see I have all of this data in an HTML file, which is another thing I can do if I want to send it to somebody else later on. And it does it in all a table and not in a list view, and very, very convenient. All right back to my PowerShell screen. All right, um, now, so structured data files, unstructured data files, we can do out file, we can convert it to HTML, we can do a CSV. There is another option as well, which is an XML file. And XML actually is a little, some ways a little bit better than a CSV file if you're going to save data in a structured file. And saving data in a structured file is useful because we'll be able to do uh, more things with it later on. So let me show you how to save data in a structured file. And for this one, I'm going to do processes just for the fun of it, just to shake things up. Get process. And I'm going to pipe that to export. Now, it was export CSV for a CSV file. For XML, it's a little bit different. It's export CLI XML, which is client XML. But I do have to give it the file name process. XML and that will capture all of my processes and there's a bunch of them by the way so this might take it a minute and it'll like the CSV file it captures all data on all processes now if you do just get process kind of like when we did get service we saw three columns get process We'll see well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight uh, columns. But when we look at the actual file, let's do notepad process.xml, ML. This is actually going to be a good sized file. You're going to see there's a lot more data here. And if you're familiar with the XML format, you're going to recognize a lot of this. If you're not, don't worry about it. You really don't need to be. But you'll see for all of these different counters here, we got a bunch of different counters here that are tied to each particular process. All right. And then to import that, it would be import CLI XML process dot XML. And that'll bring it in. Now, at that point, 
notice I it looks like I'm looking at process data, and I am, but I'm not looking at current process data. I'm looking at the processes at the time that uh, XML file was captured. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can export and then re-import uh, data from PowerShell.